Good morning. All right. So today we're going to talk about follow up. Um, so we've talked about samples and getting those samples in the mail, um, posting on Facebook, getting leads generated from those Facebook posts and making sure you're watching the likes on your Facebook posts and not just the comments because a lot of people will like, but they won't comment. They won't reach out to you, but they are interested in the products. So make sure you're writing down those likes too and reaching out to those people. Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is follow up. The fortune is in the follow up and I can't stress this enough. Like it is so, so important. And probably one of the things that scared me the most in the beginning, because I didn't want to come across salesy and, um, I didn't want to come across pushy, but I realized that you do have to follow up. People are busy. We have busy lives. Our minds are going a million different directions. And so it's really important that you're staying in the forefront of their, of, your, of their mind. Otherwise, um, they're just going to go about their day and maybe think about you here and there and think, oh my gosh, I haven't messaged her back. Um, what am I going to do? You know, what am I thinking? So you need to be following up and asking the right questions. And number one is asking for the sale. I know in the beginning I didn't do this enough. Like I hem hawed around and asked if they had any questions, that type of thing. So I'm going to give you a few examples of like how I follow up now. Um, you know, one, if you had sent them some samples, you could just follow up with a brief message that says, Hey girl, um, what do you think about the sample I sent you? Did you like it? Are you ready to get started? So that is my last sentence. Are you ready to get started? Um, and then see what they say. Or if it's somebody you've been talking to back and forth for a while, answering a lot of their questions, you feel like they are there, they are ready to sign up and you don't know what is holding them back. Like, just be honest, like be open, say, Hey girl, okay, we've been talking about Plexus a lot. I really feel like you're ready to order. What is holding you back? And they're going to give you an answer. So maybe they just need more information. Maybe it's financial reasons. Um, they're waiting to get paid or things like that, but you have to ask the question to figure out the answer. You have to know what is holding them back. Okay. So don't be shy about asking, like, just make it, make it casual. Just be like, Hey girl, what is holding you back right now? Let me know and let's overcome it. So that's the num number one thing is you're just going to be overcoming their objections. So either they're not comfortable with the ingredients or the products or, you know, they've been doing some research on their own and they still have more questions. So it's your job to answer those questions. Okay. Um, Follow up is really important. I'm going to post a graphic in the comments that shows like a sales statistic um, that says like between the seventh and 10th exposure is when you are going to make a sale. So it's not the first time you reach out to them. It's not the second time you reach out to them. It's not the third time they think about you. It's the seventh, to the 10th time that you, that Plexus pops into their mind. Either you popped into their mind for some reason, they see your post or you commented on one of their posts or they see a picture of you and they're like, oh my gosh, I need to get back with Amanda. Or it's, it's you messaging them about Plexus or about something else. You know, it doesn't have to be always Plexus in our follow-ups. Um, but you do have to follow up. You're never going to get any sales if you do not follow up with your customers, okay? Or your potentials. Um, the other thing you need to do is follow up with your customers. Once you start getting ambassadors and customers, it's so important to keep those relationships going and to constantly be following up and um, checking in on them from time to time and seeing if there's anything you can adjust in their regimen or new products you can recommend um, and just, just help them. So another way I, another thing I learned in overcoming objections in the beginning was really important to me, um, was the feel felt found method. And it's really simple and it just relates you to your potential even more. So if they are struggling with the financial issue of the cost of the products, you can say, I understand how you feel. I felt the same way in the beginning. I didn't know how I was going to afford $150 a month on products. But what I found is that I was able to cut out all of these over the counter scripts. Um, I'm eating better. I'm drinking water. I cut out the soda, you know, whatever it is. Um, so feel felt found. I understand how you feel that I felt the same way. And here's what I found. Okay. So it just relates your story to them even better. All right. So try to try to implement the feel felt found in your follow ups um, when you're overcoming those objections and just ask for the sale and ask them what's holding them back. OK, just be honest. Um, that's the only way you're going to get to the root of what these people need to know to get them to push 
purchase, okay? So they just need an extra push in some area and it's your job to help them get over that objection. Um, so that is it for now. I may post another, uh, a couple other videos that I really love from different leaders in the comments and um, that you guys can watch um, when you have time. So let us know what questions you have and we're happy to help.